Ventilative cooling is quite a sensitive thing, a sensitive balance and the picture should change. It's a sensitive balance of temperatures and temperature swing and of, um, of temperature differences. Three crucial things that have to happen if venti cooling works and it will work if this happens. The room has to be allowed a significant day and night swing in temperature. So only rooms which you allow to get warmer during the day and to get cooler during the night are uh, good partners in ventilative cooling. No strict temperature level will support you in ventilative cooling. Second thing, the room has to be equipped with um, thermally active materials, so with storage components, which thermally store heat and release heat. And third point, and this is a most crucial point, we rely on nights that are cooler than the days and we rely on an air change that should be as high as 10 air changes per hour or at least five air changes per hour, but significantly high. So these are the three components we really have to secure, a day and night swing in the room, um, uh, storage, um, heat buffer, heat storage in the building components, and a significant day and night swing outside and a significant air change. These are the, the things ventilative cooling is made of, but all components which we will present today and discuss today with the, with the industry and, and designers are, are components that support this air change and this mass activation. So we talk about airflow guiding ventilation components which in the most, well, and in the most logic thing, because they're already there, uh, windows, doors, and roof lights. It's a very good idea to use them since they're there already for the reasons of, of light uh, su supply and others. It's a very good idea to use flaps, grills, louvers, or dampers, because then you get rid of, of burglary risk, of insects, of dust and noise. And it's a good idea if you have already a, an, an active ventilation system, then for sure you have to make up your mind about the, the shape and functionality of the terminals. The second group of building components we discuss are those airflow enhancing ventilation components. So those components to make the air move that can be powerless ventilators that can be chimneys that use the buoyancy effect or the wind effect or the, 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 the solar chimneys or things like this. And for sure they can be and very often are mechanical ventilators. But we love the powerless stuff because um, as I said, ventilative cooling is quite a sensitive balance. And if you start putting a lot of ventilator energy in it, then the, the sensitive balance can be, can be destructed very quickly. There are additive we, uh, components of, of ventilation and of ventilative cooling, which we call passive cooling ventilation components. They are not basically meant for, for um, change the air and do nighttime um, flush ventilation, but some of them are meant to do comfort ventilation. So to make the air move and give your body the feeling of, of a cooler surrounding because of evaporation of the skin. There the can be evaporators which are added to the ventilation flow and again change the temperature of the air. And there can be phase change materials out of the family of, of heat storage um, components which use the benefit of phase change. We will have presentations to these materials. And as a fourth group, we need automation components, ventilative cooling in modern homes is very much about automation. We need actuators, sensors, and controllers. These are the four groups of components we, we, we are already, we always face if we apply ventilative cooling systems. Let's start with the airflow guiding components. I already said windows and doors and roof lights are highly effective components. They're cheap. They, they can be manually used or automated. They are, yes, very effective. If you look at the formula, 
you can have a pressure drop of only one pascal in an open flow area of one square meter and there uh, an air volume flow of 3000 cubes per hour will pass so that's enormous amount that's the that's the that's the strength of window ventilation the the limitations of window ventilation is for sure that if a window is open it's not only open for air but for driving rain for for bad people for dust for insects and noise and so these are the questions in in window ventilation and i'm very happy that we we we, we welcome Peter Volpiak from Velux company. They are quite good in window ventilation and he will present products and solutions for this. Um, uh, the next step can be use dampers, flaps, louvers and grills for as a, as a ventilation component. They are an answer against those, those challenges of burglary, dust, insects and noise. Um, it's a, always a balance. The higher protective they are against those those um, things you want to keep outside, the, the higher the pressure drop will be. And uh, it's a good idea to to shape and design them in in a free running mode, so in a in a passive ventilation strategy, to pressure drops at the grill at, with only one to three pascal. Uh, natural ventilation will support this pressure drop, but not too much more. So this could be a design issue. We're very happy to welcome Ivan Poulet from Ransom Company, Belgium. It's a company that has a, a, a very smart and good uh, collection of, of grills and louvers and, and ventilative openings. Another airflow guiding components are terminals. The passive ones like window ventilators, again, Renson has a, a number of them in, in its program. And for sure, you know them all in the in the active ventilation system, in the home ventilation system, those discular diffusers, the disc valves, a very, very uh, common part of, of active ventilation. Again, this one Pascal is a good idea to have in the passive design in the active design, the, the components in the, in the home ventilation systems are usually designed to a pressure drop of 10 or 40 Pascal. You see it's already a factor of 10 in between the passive system and the active system. This is why we love the passive system. They do not need energy, but they have to get along with a very low pressure drop. Another wonderful thing is those airflow enhancing ventilation components. So passive stuff that 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 causes a pressure drop driven by wind or by temperature differences. A wonderful thing is those Venturi vents, non-rotating devices, quite robust using the Venturi effect of, of a negative pressure drop as soon as the wind blows. They, they, they start working at a wind speed of, of two and something meter per second and already can support a pressure drop of four Pascal, which we already learned is a, is a sound level for, for, for ventilative cooling. They can get up to 60 Pascal if the wind really starts blowing. Um, we love the uh, chimneys who, who use the buoyancy driving force, but it's very low. So uh, a chimney is is a good thing to have. It does not depend on wind. Uh, it it can work with uh, temperature differences, but the 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 delta p caused by temperature differences you see it in this formula, and you can play around with this formula, and the result will be one or two pascal if you are lucky and if the chimney is high. We will welcome Nick Hopper from Monodraft Company from the UK. They have a lot of very smart products in the field of airflow enhancing ventilation components. Some of the photos are already from them. Sure, there are millions of different forms of mechanical ventilators. They try to be efficient, they are efficient and still they need electricity and still with using electricity, they will raise the temperature of the air which they transport. So it's a good idea to have them as extract ventilators in ventilative cooling and not as, as um, inlet flow ventilators because the 
the, 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 the energy of the ventilator will all, already easily rise the temperature of the air, which he trans it transports by one Kelvin. That's, in, that, that's easily done. And, and we not only work with low pressure drops in ventilative cooling, we also work with low temperature differences. So be careful with the, with the influence of ventilators to the temperature of the air they transport. One thing is still a very good option in ventilative cooling that is make use if you have a, if you have a balanced ventilation system with heat recovery, then for sure use that um, ability of heat recovery in all situations where it's outside hotter than inside, then the, the, the heat recovery can be a very good component to make sure uh, the heat stays out. Comfort ventilators are those things who make the air move. And we know that a, a, an air movement of roughly um, one meter per second or something lower causes the, the rise of acceptable temperature by roughly 3K. That comes from the enhanced evaporation of the skin. One meter per second is not more than the speed of walking, so it's not too much. And if you if you supply this with effective um, motors, then then it's a very effective way of not cooling. So it's not physically cooling the room, but it's cooling the body, and that's what we want. Um, we have those uh, passive cooling ventilation components like evaporators and phase change materials. Uh, evaporators uh, see a high interest in the in the ambient surrounding now. So with the with the uh, dry mist nozzles in in many cities, you will see them. And phase change material is a wonderful additive thing, additive to 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 simply um, heavy building materials. And we welcome again Nikopper. They have with a monodraft company a wonderful product in the field of phase change material ventilation. I come to an end. We use a lot of automation components, actuators. We use a lot of sensors and we use a lot of controllers. We need those components because people are not always at home and not only waiting for, for actuate their ventilation components on their own, but they are outside and the rain starts and the windows have to close and everything has to happen and it happens. Um, Again, many things to, to make sure, many decisions to have been taken between low tech and high tech. And again, we're very happy. I think we have Yannick Roth. I'm not sure if he's in the today webinar. If Yannick is here, then you will hear Window Master. If not, then Peter Volkberg and Velux know a lot about window control too. So I come to an end. Uh, you're very much welcomed to, to visit the websites of the two annexes. In fact, they are presented on the AIVC website. It's the Annex 62, which is um, has been closed or is ready and, and finished. You find a, a fine collection of material on the specific question of ventilative cooling. And in the running annex of Annex 80, it's the next step to the resilient cooling, not mm -hmm. only ventilative, but ventilative too.